Again, today's work will be mostly conceptual. You should be using your own dimensions and your own design idea. Starting with a sketch, I've laid out some simple geometry, a couple of things to keep in mind. The diameter of this hole that I intend, intend to apply threads has a tolerance of 0.3. So instead of exactly 10 millimeters of 3D printed material, material I'm leaving an opening of 10.3 for a better fit. That typically is at least enough for ABS or PLA 3D printed material. Next, I did a finished sketch and an extrusion. And I want to go ahead and turn off my section analysis. With the section analysis off, you can see that this is a very basic shape, kind of like a donut with some flat surfaces. The flat surfaces I will use then uh, to stick to adhere to the bed of the 3D printer. The threads, I'm using the exact same thread pattern from my valve in the previous menu. Uh, check the playlist for the previous menu item. And then I applied a different sketch on top of that. Let's go ahead and edit that sketch so you can have a look at some of that geometry. This sketch consists of essentially uh, a perimeter profile plus this rib that would stick flat to the bottom of the 3D build plate as well. Your 3D printer usually wants something flat to stick to. Uh, otherwise, your 3D printed material can break loose. Next, I performed an extrusion based off of that. And that is the cylinder inside which my piston will uh, move back and forth. And then finally, another sketch on top. Similar, if not identical, geometry. So that gets us far enough along that we can finish the casing portion. And I'll go ahead and turn these sketches off for now. I did decide to significantly lighten the uh, build of this 3D printed product and I applied a shell on the inside of that area right there. The shell reduces the amount of 3D printed material used and next I went ahead to the top of this object and closed it off completely. So where it was open I have now closed it off and then placed a slot, a slot where the piston rod would come through that little slot. All right. So that is the casing portion. Now let's go ahead and start talking about the next pieces. I'm going to hide this body temporarily and we'll go ahead and look at the next pieces starting with a very simple cylinder that's again tolerance of less than two millimeters of the interior diameter of that casing that I just made. And, obviously, I need to create the, the rod that attaches to the piston. So, from that point in time, it's a matter of converting bodies to components. So, that most recent body I named Plunger, and it's inside there. And then, 
The previous body I named casing, and that is what wraps around it. Finally, I did go ahead from the assemble menu and perform a joint. I will take a minute and explain this joint, the last step of my process is going to be to assemble everything. So since I had the piston design open, I started my assembly here. I'll go ahead and turn the section analysis back on so you can see when I animate this joint, all right, you get to see the action of the piston, all right? And that's exactly what we expect it to do when it receives pressure or there's no pressure on it. If there's no pressure on it, gravity would allow it to fall back down. When it receives pressure, it gets pushed back up. So we can escape out of that. And I will turn the section analysis off and I will show you everything you need to know about this particular type of joint. This one is called a slider joint, okay? And I set some thresholds to ensure that it doesn't go beyond the bottom of this cavity and into the threaded area, okay? And I made sure to slide it across the Z axis. So that then creates a relationship between those two parts uh, where they can slide back and forth uh, as if they were under pressure from pneumatics. Again, your design size and shape could vary significantly and it's always helpful again to perform a section analysis to make sure that you have for example, in this area down here, you can see the pink and the yellow shaded areas. They have a little bit of a tolerance in there. They're not exactly the same size, but they are close enough that not a lot of air would escape when it was under pressure. Don't forget to save your work. And as always, Whatever you design, I hope you enjoy the heck out of it.